Good evening, and welcome to Full Moon Matinee. I'm your host, The Detective, bringing you the finest crime dramas and film noir from the golden age of Hollywood. Tonight's picture is from 1948, All My Sons, starring Edward G. Robinson, Burt Lancaster, and Louisa Horton. And it's based on a play that was written by Arthur Miller and was adapted for the screen by Chester Erskine. Now this picture, it's the story of a self-made industrialist who commits a crime with a wartime government contract and he frames his business partner for it while masterminding his own alibi. But when his son becomes engaged to the daughter of his former partner, that's when the deceit begins to come to light. Now, Edward G. Robinson, uh, and he's in the top build role here, he delivers an outstanding performance throughout this entire picture, uh, much like he did in Scarlet Street. Uh, that was one I brought you, it was a couple months back. But yeah, we do see a great performance here from Edward G. Robinson. And one thing that you will see here, as the picture moves along, it becomes more and more thought-provoking. So, from 1948, All My Sons. Let's roll the picture. this morning and I let her. Yeah, I know. I heard her crying. Yeah, she cried hard, all right. Dad, we made a terrible mistake with her. Somehow she's got to be made to understand that Larry's dead. It's insane what she's doing. She might hear us. Dad, walk over to the garage with me. I want to talk to you. You might just as well get that stuff out of your mind because you'll never convince her. For three years. Nobody comes back after three years. Well, you can talk yourself blue in the face, but there's no body and there's no grave. He was reported missing, that's all. So where are you? You just have to look at the newspapers. Every month some boy turns up somewhere, so the next one is going to be Larry. Look, Dad, I'm going to ask Anne to marry me. Well, Annie is Larry's girl. She was engaged to marry him. She's not Larry's girl. How can she be Larry's girl when Larry's dead? Well, from Mother's point of view, he's not dead. And you've no right to take his girl. 
The world's full of girls and you pick out Annie. I happen to be in love with her. Yes, but you've hardly seen her since you moved away from here. More than that, since you went to war. I saw her in Chicago last year for two whole weeks, morning, noon and night. Besides that, I was brought up next door to her. I know her best all my life. When I think of someone for my wife, I think of Annie. What do you want, a diagram? Well, you marry that girl and you're pronouncing him dead. You've no right to do that. All right, then. some more thought, kid. I have given it thought. I hoped we could have a regular wedding and everything happy. But if that can't be, then I'll have to get out. What are you talking about? I'll get out, that's all. I'll get married and live someplace else. Are you crazy? I've got a right to live my own life. That's what you've got, a business here, a factory. What is this? Business doesn't inspire me. What do you mean, inspired? Do you have to be inspired? Ain't it enough you're sitting pretty? One step behind me in a first-class manufacturing plant that's turning in more profits than you'll ever be able to spend. Inspired. The Keller machine works alone do not inspire me. If I have to grub for my money all day long, at least I want something for it. I want a family, a home. I want some kids. I want to build something I can give myself to. Anne's in the middle of that. Now, where do I find it? Here or elsewhere? You name it. You mean... Tell me something. You mean you'd leave the business? Yes. On this, I would. Well, don't think like that. Then help me to stay here. All right, but don't think like that, because what did I work for? It's all for you. The whole shooting match is for you. I know that, Dad. Just help me to stay here. That's all I ask. Well, don't think like that. I'm thinking like that. Look, uh, let's leave it this way. Don't do anything without Kate knowing about it. I don't want her to be hurt. You know the way she is. I don't want to hurt Mom, Dad. I you know, know you that. don't. I know you don't. But that's why you've got to be careful. Now, just don't go running off and do something crazy. See what I mean? I see. Well, promise me you'll talk to her first. All right, I promise. I don't know you, kid, do I? No, Dad, you don't. This is our Annie. How do you do? How do you do? She looks very intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> what can I take for it? <laughs> Chris likes you. He writes about you in his letters. I can think of better things to write about to a pretty girl. What's the matter with you, Chris? Jim! Come in here. Mrs. Adams is on the phone. I told you I don't want to be disturbed. Sunday is my day off. What do you mean you... No calls on Sunday. Hello. You must be Anne. And you must be Mrs. Bayless. Guilty, but don't hold it against me. It was his bedside manner. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on in and talk to her. She says she's in great pain. She gives me a great pain. What's the matter with her now? What do you think's the matter, huh? She wants you to go over and hold her hand, beautiful. So go. Such are the conditions which prevail. Never marry a nurse, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I better go in and see. He doesn't muff that call. See you. Annie! Joe! <laughs> Annie! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Hello, Joe. Annie. <laughs> yeah, let me look at you. Annie, you're beautiful. A dish if I ever saw one. Here, give us a kiss. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> They're still falling for me. How do you like that? You're a regular dog. <laughs> yeah, let me help you. Come on in, Annie. Welcome home. You're a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> Come on, Annie. Here we are. Oh, uh, Kate. Kate? Yes? Annie's here. How's it look for you? It looks wonderful. Still know your way around? I think I do. Oh, the piano. I haven't touched one in years. Oh, Annie, uh, you better not play on it. Kate hasn't let anybody use it since uh, Larry, you know. That's silly. Larry would love to have me play it. Play it, Well, I'm just telling you that... Go ahead, play it. nice. It's been so long since anyone's played that piano. Hello, Kate. Annie, darling, I'm so glad you could come. It was so wonderful to be back again. I'll take your bags upstairs. Yeah, seems like old times with Annie around, hey, Kate? <laughs> Almost like old times. The piano still sounds good, in spite of the way Larry and I used to punish it. You think of him. You see, Joe? She still thinks of him. What do you mean, Kate? Just that you remember him? He's in your thoughts. That's a funny thing to say. How could I help remembering him? I I'll take you up to your room. I'll see you later, Annie. You must be tired after that long train ride. I didn't mind. It was fun to be coming home. Oh. Home. No, I couldn't. I was too excited. Well. A room that doesn't look out on a court. What a relief. No kidding, Mom. Isn't she the sweetest gal you ever saw? <laughs> Cut it out, Chris. You'll have me believing it. Okay, then you're not the sweetest gal I ever saw. Mom is. Oh, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Go away. <laughs> See you downstairs. Chris feels just like a brother to you. And I suppose in the way he is. How do you like Chicago? Still work at the same place? Chicago's okay. I'm still pounding a typewriter for Lubowitz and Cochran, attorneys at law, bless them. And what's all this? These all belong to Chris? No, this is Larry's room. Don't you remember? Me? Hey, Larry's? Yes. Didn't you recognize them? Well, it never occurred to me that you'd. The shoes are all shine. Yes, dear. But when he comes back. Sometimes it's better to let things stay the way they are. Not disturb them. No matter what. Yeah, I put it in the garbage. Oh. Will you do me a favor, Joe? Stop being helpful. That was my potatoes. I thought it was garbage. If you'd make up your mind that every bag in the kitchen isn't garbage, you wouldn't be throwing out my vegetables. Last time it was the onions. I don't like garbage. Then stop eating. When I was a little girl in the old country, a bag of potatoes was like a bag of gold. Where's Annie? She's changing her dress. 
I wish she hadn't come. Why not? People will ask questions. Let them. Well, we ought to know the answers. What questions? What answers? Good thing she come here. Let people know there's no grudge and what's past is past. It's a good thing. I like that girl. She's got a lot of spunk coming here at that. No flies on her. You like every girl. Well, no flies on me either. <laughs> <laughs> Don't move, anybody. Say, Annie, I never noticed it before, but you got pretty legs. Joe. What she has. Joe's getting gay, Kate. You ought to do something about him. No fool like an old fool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kate, I've got the charts here for Larry's horoscope. Came yesterday in the mail. Annie! Mike! Lydia! Lydia! Yeah. Come on over. Annie's here. Annie! Be right down. Gee whiz. It's good to see you, Frank. Long time no see, Annie. How's Trix? Tricks are fine, Frank. How's Tricks with you? Oh, I got three kids. <laughs> so I've heard. Are you still haberdashery? Why not? Maybe I, too, can get to be president. <laughs> <laughs> My, you look wonderful. You've gotten sort of... Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Take it easy. You're a married man now. Yeah, and how? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think you'll be interested in this, Annie. It's Larry's horoscope. Kate asked me to work on it. I sent for a chart. Horoscope for what? You see, the point is, if February 9th, yeah. that's the day Larry disappeared, was a favorable day for him, then it's completely possible he's alive somewhere. Because he couldn't have been killed on his favorable day. Bilge. Oh, sure. Just because you don't believe in it. There's lots of things you don't believe in that are true just the same. This isn't something I make up, you know. It's all in the stars. It's been going on forever. Annie! Lydia, it's so good to see you. <gasps> Having babies agrees with you. Which one is this? Meet my latest. <laughs> we call him Rupert after Frank's grandfather. I think it's awful. <laughs> well, what's so awful about it? Oh, Frank, the toaster won't work again. I fixed it this morning. Oh, I know, honey, but fix it back the way it was. Do you... Uh, how's your brother? George is fine. He's got his own office now. Full-fledged lawyer without clients. <laughs> and your dad, is he getting along all right? I don't know. Does he expect a parole soon? Frank, you better go back to the house. I left Gertrude in the kitchen. When I get to yourself. think sometimes how an intelligent man like your father can be put in prison when there are gangsters running loose all over the country. Cut it out, Frank. Oh. Well, see you later. I'm sorry, Annie. Frank's just a dope, I guess. But he means well. Sure. I know. I'll drop in to see you. Bye now. Oh, Kate, I'll have your hat finished by tomorrow. Just some trimming left to do. That's nice. Lydia still loves to make hats. I don't know how she finds the time with three kids. Haven't they stopped talking about it? Nobody talks about it anymore, Ann. Honestly. Gone a forgotten kid, believe me. How do you think I could stay on here in business if they didn't? Well, it's different with you. You were exonerated. Annie's father's still in prison. She might as well be prepared. People do talk about it. The only one who still talks about it is my wife. I think she's sorry they let me go. It suddenly was more peaceful in the house while you were away. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> Down there, didn't I tell you? Gosh, it's wonderful to hear you laughing about it. It doesn't seem so awful when you laugh about it, does it? Sure, what did you expect? Say, I got a great idea. Why don't we all go out to the lake tonight and have a short dinner like we used to do? The whole caboodle of us. I think that'll be just fine. What do you say, Annie? I'd love it. You got our business. I'll call up Swanson's to reserve a table. Oh, no, 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 you don't. Now, this is my party. I'll do the calling. We're going to have the whole work. Soup to nuts, wine and everything. We'll get Mom's stink off. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. I couldn't drink another one. Oh, come on, Ma. Now, Joe, you know I can't stand more than one. Oh, this is a celebration. <laughs> come on. Where was I? Uh -uh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, so, uh, this fellow begins to worry a little. 
And so one day he decides he'd go home unexpectedly. And so... <laughs> Uh, keep it clean now. <laughs> oh, clean as a baby's thoughts. One of the kids in the office told it to me. Oh, drink up, everybody. It'll seem a lot cleaner. And so... is ready, Mr. Keller. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, bring your drinks to the table, will you? I'll finish the story there. I'll send them over. Thank you. This way, please. I follow Good service. Now, let's not have any trouble tonight. What do you say? He's a murderer. So who ain't? Good evening, Mr. Keller. Hiya, Henry. Hiya. Hiya. Where have you been keeping yourself, sir? Where are we, anyway? <laughs> That's oh, enough, there we That's are. enough. <laughs> There's okay. a muffle on the floor. Can you teach me that step? Shake a mean leg, don't I? <laughs> Murder. Oh, safety first, huh? <laughs> oh, looks great, Pete. Nothing but the best for you, Mr. Keller. Uh, anything you want, just holler for it. Uh, don't encourage him. Mr. Keller can have anything in the place. We don't see him often enough. Not like the old days, eh, Mr. Keller? No, not like the old days. Big shot, huh? Didn't know your old man had influence, did you? You stick around me, kid, and you'll go places. This is where I put on pounds. Oh, lobster's not fattening. It is the way I eat it. So, uh, this fella goes home unexpectedly. Hey, Joe! Hi, Ed. How's things? Great. And you? Oh, never felt better. That's Ed. Uh, what's his name? Can't think of his last name. Nice fellow. Here, you're doing this all wrong. You're missing the best part. Let me do it for you. But I could never eat lobster, right? Now, look, you dig in like this, see? And then you twist it like that. It's all oh. free. <laughs> it's too big, Joe. <laughs> so, uh, this fella goes home unexpectedly. And... Who goes home? This fella. <laughs> this better be good. It is good. So, uh, this fella goes home unexpectedly. He knocks on the door and nobody answers. So he goes around to the back. Joe. Look who's at the bar. Everybody's a point killer around here. Who's at the bar? Mrs. Hamilton. She's drunk, too. So what? Oh, so nothing. She's always drunk. She's a lush. Who's Mrs. Hamilton? Oh, a lush, that's all. Uh, she worked at the factory for a while during the war when we were taking on extra help. Her husband was killed in the invasion. In France. Oh. Will you let a man finish his story? So nobody answers the door and he goes around to the back. And he climbs in the window. Joe, she's seen us. She's coming this way. They're making a big thing out of nothing. Just pay no attention to her. That's all. She'll go away. So, uh, when he gets inside, there, uh, wearing his own pajamas and uh, smoking one of his best cigars, is this guy. And, uh, he says, uh, pardon me, I didn't know I was home. Murderer. <laughs> now you cut it out, do you hear? Murderer. Now you cut it out or I'll... Murderer! Joe! What's going on here? Get her out of here, quick, out! It's all right, folks. Everything is all right. Go back to your tables, please. I'm sorry, Mr. Keller. Okay, Pete. She does that every time she gets drunk and she runs into me. She's got some kind of a crazy bug in her head. Don't mean nothing. Sit down. Joe, let's go home. I don't feel so good. Yes, please. That's... Okay. You can go along to the car and call it here. I'll pay the checks. See you outside. Not uh, letting that upset you, are you? Well, I guess things aren't just the way I thought they'd be. Perhaps I shouldn't have come back. That's what I told Chris. Mom. Kate's right. She's not right. You had to come because this is where you belong. Now, oh, look, uh, listen to me, Annie. You do it like I did and you're going to be all right. The day I come home after the trial, I got out of my car. Not in front of the house. Oh, no. On the corner. 
You should have been here. <laughs> you too, Chris, you'd have seen something. Everybody knew I was out that day. Nobody believed I was really innocent. The porches were loaded. So I got out of my car. I walked down the street. But slow. And with a smile on my face. The beast. I was the beast. I was the guy who sold defective cylinders to the Army Air Force. I was the guy who made 21 planes crash in Australia. Well, a kid walking down the street that day was something. But I walked past the porches, past every single one of them with my head up. Result? Fourteen months later, I had one of the best shops in the state again. A respected man again. Bigger than ever. I'm afraid I haven't the courage, Joe. Well, that's the only way you lick them, with courage. You gotta have guts. Every Tuesday night, the whole pack of them is playing poker up in my office. We've got a standing date. All those who yelled murder trying to take my money from me. Annie, the worst thing you did was to move away from here. And it ain't gonna end till you move back. Till people start playing cards with your dad again and smile with him, talk with him. Play cards with a man, you know he can't be a criminal. Next time you write him, I'd like you to tell him just what I said. But I don't write him. Well, every now and then Neither you... does George. But why? Because he did murder 21 pilots. That's what? why. What kind of talk is that? There's no thing to see about a man. When they took him away, I followed him. I went to see him every visiting day. Until I learned the news about Larry. Then I stopped. What your father did had nothing to do with Larry. Nothing. Because he's not dead, do you hear? He's not dead. Now, Kate, please. Kate. He's not dead. I think I'll turn in. There's some cool things in the icebox. If anybody's still hungry. And some grape juice. Listen, Annie, there's no proof that Larry ever flew one of those planes. Who flew them? Pigs? Listen, the man was a fool, but don't make a killer out of him. You got no sense? Look what it does to her. Now, look, Annie, you've got to appreciate what it was doing in the shop in the war. I mean, just try to see it human. Just see it human. All of a sudden, the batch of cylinders come out bad. Something went wrong, a mistake. But it ain't murder. You mustn't feel that way about him, you understand me? He didn't have to ship them. All right, so he shipped them. He believed they'd hold up 100%, and some of them did. The Major's screaming for the livery is me homesick, so he shipped them. He shouldn't have. I don't say it was right. No, he shouldn't have. But it wasn't murder. It wasn't murder. Well, let's forget about it, Joe. Annie, the day the news came about Larry, he was in the cell next to mine, your dad. And he cried, Annie. Cried half the night. I guess the fathers of those boys cried, too. Don't talk like that. I don't understand why you... you... Are you going to cut it out? Hey, Chris, don't yell at him. We've had too much of that kind of talk. Yeah, Chris is right. Too much talk about it. Now, look. Uh, why don't you two go driving or something? Uh, stopping at a roadhouse. What's the matter with you anyway, Chris? Pretty girl on your hands and all you do is sit around here. Oh, why don't you mind your own business? He's right, Chris. Let's go somewhere. Now there, what did I tell you? Too bad I'm not younger myself, Annie. You're just the right age. Well, Joe. what do you know, huh? Beat <laughs> it, you. Your competition. Well, have a good time. Enjoy yourself. Go to bed. Hello? Yes. It's long distance. Somebody wants to talk to Annie. Well, she went riding with Chris. Uh, she's not in just now. Oh, in an hour, maybe. Who? All right, I'll tell her. That was George calling her. George? From Springfield, Joe. What's she doing there? Went to see his father, I suppose. What else? But Annie said they hadn't been in touch. That's what I was thinking. 
Teller Operator 4. Remember how we used to picnic here? You, Larry, and I? This is where I learned three was a crowd. You were too sensitive. Are you still? The army rubs some of it off. Not enough, I'm afraid. Chris, I'm not staying. Well, why? What's happened? For one thing, Kate doesn't want me here. Oh, well, she doesn't understand. She's just... And then, just... ever since I got here, you've been a little... Well, distant. Am I embarrassing you by being here, Chris? Why, no, Annie, no. You act like it. Well, you, you see, I... The trouble is, I, I sort of figured I'm working up to this, but... I guess you know why I asked you to come. I guess that's why I came. Oh, I love you, Annie. Honest, I love you a great deal. I love you. Gee, you... I have no imagination at all, and I have to tell you, isn't it awful? I didn't want to tell it to you here. I, I wanted some place where we'd, we'd never been, a place where we were brand new to each other. Where we... I kissed you, Annie. I kissed Annie. How long I've been with you, I kissed you. I'm going to live now. I'll make you happy, so happy. <sighs> Not like that, you know. You kiss me like Larry's brother. No, kiss me like Chris. How long have you loved me, Chris? Always. Ever since we were kids. You never said anything or showed it. Larry's girl. You're funny. So, oh, Annie, uh, there's a long distance call for you. Ask for operator four in Springfield. Springfield? Yes. It's George. Oh. Operator four, please. Diva speaking. You ought to call for me. Hello, George. This is Anne. What are you doing in Springfield? I can't understand you. What are you so excited about? You're not making sense. But what did he say to you? No, no, I won't discuss it with you anymore on the phone. I'll see you in Chicago. In Chicago. Anything wrong? No. How's George? He's all right. I went to see my father. What is it? Uh, your dad took sick or something? No, George is just a little upset, that's all. But what? I think I'll turn in now. Good night, Joe. Good night. Good night, Chris. Good night, Ed. Doc gave me these pills for you to take. I told him about last night. Sleeping pill? That's what he said. 
I hate to take sleeping pills. I don't like the kind of sleep they give you. Oh, well, it's better than staying awake all night. I think Rupert's cutting another tooth. Lydia says no, but I think he is. All these years, he don't even write to her. Suddenly, he goes to see him. He's a lawyer now, Joe. Well, what's that got to do with it? Lawyers like to dig up things. Well, let him dig. Can't scare me. You're sure, Joe? Oh, sure, I'm sure. I got a court paper that says so. Let him dig. Then stop worrying. I'm not worrying. Joe, Chris is not going to marry Annie. I won't have it. Go to sleep. Be smart, Joe. Get her out of here. She means trouble for us. She and George both. Go to sleep. Be smart, Joe. <laughs> Just kidding yourself, Tom. This baby will never do this. I'll go to work on it in the morning to see what I can do. Meantime, use the old machine. Okay, boss. Same old Joe. If you want to know, ask Joe. That's what we used to say. That's right, Charlie. That's what we used to say, all right. If you want to know, ask Joe. Okay, fellas, get with it. Knocking off time in until five. What I want to know, Joe, is what's this all about? Nobody in the office seems to know. Have to come to the old man, huh? Oh, uh, this is the stuff I picked up at the bankruptcy sale. Must be a whole flat car full of it. Send the trucks down, pick it up. Tell us about these things, will you, Mr. Keller? This isn't a one-armed joint you're running anymore. They will never get used to an office full of people nosing around in my business. Where were you this morning? You come in late. I stayed in that breakfast with Annie. Well, business before pleasure. You can dock yourself a couple of hours' pay. Wait a minute, it was only an hour. Hour and 14 minutes. If you want to know, ask Joe. Any feeling all right? Great. Oh, uh, we need some more lathe operator. We'll show it five or six. Did uh, Annie say why George called her up? And uh, some finishers, as many as we can get. No, I guess it wasn't anything. Why, does it bother you? No, it's uh, just that I don't want them raking up things that had better be forgotten. To his last day in court, that man blamed it all on me. This is his daughter. Dad. Annie's going to be my wife. You asked her? Last night. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad for your kid. And I'm glad Annie's going to be part of the family. It's going to make it better all the way around. I want a clean start for your kid. <coughs> I want a new sign over the plant. J.E. Keller and Son. How's that sound? That sounds important. It is important. I'm going to build you a house. Stone. With a driveway from the road. I want you to spread out, Chris. I want you to use what I made for you. With joy, I mean. Without shame. With joy. Of course, Dad. Sometimes I think you're ashamed of the money. Ashamed of it. I'm sorry. Because it's good money. There's nothing wrong with that money. Well, you don't have to tell me this, Dad. Well, forget it, kid. <laughs> forget it. Am I interrupting big business? Eddie. <laughs> I came to drive you both home. Hello, Eddie. What, at uh, 4.30? What kind of a plan do you think we run here? You've been here long enough. That's right. Tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Annie, Chris just told me the good news. I'm glad. Really glad. Thank you, Joe. You know, you belong with us. In the same family. You and George. And Dad. I hope that uh, George found him a little less bitter toward me when he saw him yesterday. He didn't say. 
Well, how about it? Am I going to drive you home? Oh, not me. I've got to stay till closing time. I'm only the boss. Slave. Come on, Chris. Let's leave him to his money making. <laughs> now, don't knock it. It comes in handy. Now, look, uh... There's one thing that you kids will have to consider, and that's Kate. You can do this thing over ahead. You understand that, don't you? That's going to be hard. Well, hard or not, you've got to do it. You'll have to talk to her. I'll talk to her. Come on, Eddie. Let's go before he thinks of something for me to do. <laughs> hey, I suppose you think that's a bad idea. Who do you think you are anyway? Coming in late and going home early? The boss's son? <laughs> well, how do you like the place, Annie? Some difference, huh? It's big, Joe. Well, all yours someday. Yours and his. Now, I want you to tell that to George next time you see him. So he can tell your dad. Might make him feel happy to know that. You're a good man, Joe. I'll see you for dinner. George phoned you, Annie. He's at the depot. Here? Yes. He wouldn't take a taxi to come out. He wanted you to meet him there. I can't imagine what's gotten into him. I finally got Jim Bailey's to go down and make him come. I'll phone the station and see if he's still there. If he's coming to reopen the case, I won't live through it. Now, we can't go through with that thing again. Now, Mom, don't get yourself worked up over nothing. It's not half as bad as you're making it out to be. When George goes, tell her to go with him. And he's different, Mom. No matter what the others may think or do, she's different. He's her father, too. She's different. You'll see. He's not there. Well, Jim must have picked him up. I better go in and look after the dinner. No matter how much help you've got, you have to look after things yourself. She's upset. She's worried about George. She thinks he's coming here to make trouble. George isn't friendly, Chris. Might as well warn you. You'd better be prepared for a lot of wild talk. George can be such an awful fool sometimes. It won't change anything between us, will it, Chris? No matter what he says. No matter what anybody says. Jim! Oh, say, have you seen Jim? I've been looking for him. Yes, he went to the station to pick up my brother. He just arrived. Well, now, how do you like that? If I ask him to drive me to the store, he hasn't got time. If anybody else asks him, that's all he's got. That's what you get for marrying such a big-hearted guy. Yeah. <laughs> please? Yeah? Come in here, please. No matter what anybody says. I guess your brother's coming to give the bride away, huh? You mean people are gossiping? Well, people can put two and two together. <laughs> What's your father going to say to all this? Why should he say anything? Well, why shouldn't he? After all, Joe outsmarted him, didn't he? That's not true. Oh, I'm sorry, Anne. You know me, I always talk too much. Have you told Kate? Not yet. It's a lie, isn't it? What you just said. There isn't a person on the block that doesn't believe it. But you know how people are. They always think the worst. But it can't be. They're on the best terms with everyone on the block. They play cards all the time. So what? They just give Joe credit for being clever, that's all. I guess I do myself. Susan. Go on and see if you can calm Mother, huh? She's all worked up. Oh, did she find out about you too? Why don't you mind your own business? Go on and see what you can do. Okay. You'll find something in the medicine cabinet. I'll give her two of everything. That's all Jim ever does. She says they think Joe's guilty. She talks too much. I'm not here out of a blue sky, Chris. I turn my back on my father. If there's anything wrong here now... Hey, he's innocent. Do you think I could forgive him if you were guilty? Believe me, there's nothing wrong for you here. He's outside in the car. Well, ask him to come in. Take my advice. Don't bring him in here. Why not? I better see if I... No, wait. I'll go get him. Why don't you stop being an idiot? He came here to take Ann away. Fight it out somewhere else. Nobody's afraid of him here. Chris! George. Hello, Annie. Out to you. Susie, this is Anne's brother, George. This is Mrs. Bayless, Jim's wife. Hello. So you're George. Well, I'm pleased to meet you at last. I've heard a lot about you, too. I've 
Will somebody take this grape juice away from me so I can shake hands with a man? Well, it's time we had some new men around here. That'll do, Sue. We have to go. Do we? Yes. Oh. I... You don't have to push me. I can take a hint. Goodbye, Andy's brother, George. So long. Uh, thanks for the lift. See you later. How about some grape juice? Kate made it especially for you. No, thanks. Seems impossible that I'm back here. How's the law, George? I don't know. When I was studying, it seemed sensible, but outside, there doesn't seem to be much of a law. You're not going to marry him. Why not? Because his father destroyed your family, that's why not. Now, look here, George. Cut it short, Chris. Tell her to come with me. Let's not argue. Who are you to come bullying your way in here like this? If you've got something to say, say it. I want to see Dad to tell him you're going to be married. It seemed impossible not to tell him. Lately, Annie, I've been thinking that maybe we've been wrong not to go see him. It's been bothering me. Whatever he did, Annie, he's our father. We've got to remember that. That's not what you said when you came back from overseas. I know what I said, and I did a terrible thing. I can never be forgiven. It wasn't all Dad's fault. Joe knew about those cylinders, Annie. He knew. That's a lie, and you know it. He was home, sick. Sick! He stayed home to give himself an alibi so all the blame would fall on Dad. But all this came out at the trial. Dad told the whole story and the jury didn't believe him. The jury didn't know him, Annie. Yesterday I heard it from his mouth. From his mouth, it's altogether different from the court record. Anybody who knows him and knows your father will believe it from his mouth. Your father tricked him. He took everything we had. I can't beat that. But this I can. She's one item he's not going to grab. Get your things and come with me. No, George. I'm staying here with Chris. Everything they have is covered with blood. You're not the kind of a girl who can live like that. Georgie! Georgie! Clyde, Georgie! Hello, Kate. Georgie, they made an old man out of you. Well, I... I told you when you went away, don't try for medals. I didn't have to try, Kate. They made it very easy for me. Ah, go on. You're all alike. Look at him. Why did you say he looks fine? He looks like a ghost. What's the matter with you? Don't you eat? It must be those restaurants. No, I feel all right. I just don't have much appetite these days, I guess. And if you ate in my house, you'd have an appetite. Wait till you see the dinner I've spread out for you. I'm not staying for dinner. I've got to get right back. Oh, of course you're staying for dinner. Okay. I've never heard such no, nonsense. No, I can't. Now, you don't start telling me what you can do and what you can't do. Going around making believe you hate us. You can't hate us, Georgie. Not in your heart. I know you. You can't fool me. I die for you. <laughs> you. You haven't changed. None of us have changed, Georgie. They're all the same. Why don't you give him some grape juice? Oh, thanks. No, you always liked grape juice the way I made it. You came for it all the time. Don't you remember? Now, here, you drink it. There. Kate? I'm feeling hungry already. I think I will stay for dinner. Nobody can resist Kate. Why should he resist me? George is like one of my own. One of my very own. I practically raised you, you and Anne both, from the day your poor mother died. Georgie. Lydia. What did you do to yourself? Just grew up, I guess. You got prettier. Here's your hat. I just finished it. Thanks. It's lovely. She's so clever, that one. I hear you have a baby. Oh, you don't hear so good. I got three. Three? You've been away a long time, Georgie. I'm beginning to realize that. You're going to be around for a while? No, I've got to get back tonight. Oh. There goes my youngest again. He cries all the time. Got to go. So long, Georgie. So long, Lydia. Be seeing you. 
She got pretty, that one. She makes things seem so nice around here. They didn't take Frank, huh? He was always one year ahead of the draft. When they were calling boys 27, he was 28, and when they made it 28, he was just 29. I guess Frank won the war. <laughs> well, 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 look who's here. <laughs> Well, good to see you. How are you, Joe? Oh, so, so, getting on. You look fine, George. He looks terrible. Yeah, that's what I said. You look terrible, George. I wear the pants and she beats me with the belt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Now I feel tired. You stay too long at the plant. Well, somebody's got to make the dough. How's your dad? Feel all right? No, he's not well, Joe. Well, that's too bad. That's the way they do, George. A man makes an honest mistake and they hang him by the thumbs. I wish you'd let me know you were going to see him. I didn't think you were interested. Well, of course I'm interested. Why shouldn't I be? I think about him a lot. And I'd like him to know that as far as I'm concerned, any time he wants, he's got a place with me. Not as my partner, of course, but uh, a job. You don't owe him anything, Dad. Of course I don't. I know that, but uh, just the same. He hates your guts, Joe. Don't you know that? Yeah. I imagine it. But well, that can change, too. I was never like that. He's like that now. Well, that's a sad thing to hear. Why? What did you expect him to think of you? Well, a uh, thing can be sad even if you expected it. I expected it because I happen to know your father. I'm sad to see that he hasn't changed. As long as I've known him, 25 years, that part of him made me sad. The man never learned to take the blame. You know that, George. Well, I... Yes, but you do know it. Because by the way you come in here, you don't look like you remembered it. I mean, like in, uh, 37, when we had the shop on Flood Street. And he near blew it up with that heater he left burning for two days without any water. He wouldn't admit it was his fault either. I had to fire a mechanic to save his face. You remember that, don't you? Yes, well, I'm just mentioning this because this is just another one of a lot of things. Like when he gave Frank next door that money to invest in oil stock. I know. I... Well, it's good to remember those things. The way he cursed Frank when that stock went down. Now, was that Frank's fault? To listen to him, you think Frank was a swindler, and all the man did was just give him a bad tip. I know those well, things. remember them. Remember them. Dinner's ready, everybody. You'll be right in, Minnie. You know, uh, there are certain men in this world who just haven't got the guts to take the blame. You understand me? Come on in. Let's eat, kid. Boy, I'll tell you, these guys, they sure got a thing for the girl next door types now, don't they? Huh. Now, Louisa Horton, and she's the one playing Anne here, this picture is her debut film. But it's the debut film to a very short filmography. Uh, obviously in tonight's picture, but then her next picture wasn't until 1952 when she was in Walk East on Beacon. After that one, her next two films were many years later and both of them were in 1976. She was in Swashbuckler and Alice Sweet Alice. Now also here, and it was very early in the picture, we got a look at Henry Morgan. Uh, he was the one playing the neighbor, Frank. Um, now, Henry Morgan, we all know him best from the 70s TV series, MASH. He was the one that played Colonel Potter. But in this picture here, he's so much younger 
that honestly, it's easier to recognize his voice than to recognize his looks. Now, in the storyline here, we can see that Mrs. Keller is having a lot of trouble coming to terms uh, in regards of her older son, Larry. She just cannot believe that he's dead. You know, it's three years after the war. He was listed as MIA, you know, missing in action, but she just can't believe he's dead. You know, it, it's the old, oh, he's still alive. He'll come back. He'll be home someday. You know, she's really struggling with this here. And I wanted to bring up this part of the storyline because uh, Mrs. Detective has a very similar story in her family. Um, her dad, uh, two of his cousins were also, like the picture here, two of his cousins were pilots in World War II. They were brothers. One of them flew B-17s out of England over Europe. He was in the 8th Air Force. But his brother flew a P-40, and he that, that's a fighter plane, and he was stationed in Burma. He was in the CBI, what's called the China-Burma-India Theater. And he got caught up in the Battle of Miechenia, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, it's one of those words that's this long. Um, got caught up in the battle. Uh, his squadron mates did see his plane going down, but it was going down over Japanese lines. So there was no way we could send in a ground search party to go look for him. You know, he's behind enemy lines. The Japanese themselves tried to look for him because they had hopes of maybe capturing a downed American pilot but in that part of Burma, the jungle is just too thick. Neither he nor his plane were ever found. I mean, not even the wreckage. And yeah, Mrs. Detective, she remembers when she was a little girl, and this was many years later, we're talking the 60s, the 70s, the 80s. When she was a little girl, she can remember when they would go over to visit his mom. And when you would come into her house through the front door in the front entrance hallway, she always kept a, a little table there in the front entrance hallway, would keep a candle burning with a picture of him beside the candle. And it was just like Mrs. Keller here in tonight's picture. It was the old, he's not dead. No, he's still alive. He'll come back. He'll be home someday. And the rest of the family knew. I mean, let's face it, not just three years after the war, but that many decades later. Come on. Y you knew. But she just held out that ray of hope that even though reason says he's dead, but because he's not officially declared that way, there's still that technical, even if it's a super lotto ticket odds, you know, that maybe he's still alive. So there's this, there's that, there's this and that again. And, you know, he, and it was obvious to the family that, you know, it affected her in ways that she kind of had some unaddressed mental health issues. And, you know, in many ways, it is a crueler fate because if you're killed in action and that's known and they recover your body, at least there's a body to bury. There's a funeral to be had. You know, at least there's a finality to it. But when you're MIA, yes, in many ways, it is truly is a crueler fate. Well, let's get back 
to all my sons. Uh, he can talk all right, but he can't bark. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. I mean, all the things Georgie likes. I didn't forget anything. Oh, no, not a Well, go on, on eat. There's lots more in the kitchen. Don't be bashful. Oh, fuss. Mom operates in the theory that there's more food in the kitchen. You're still hungry. Well, I don't think you're not starving. Uh, Georgie, go on now. Take some, will you? Uh, leave a little for me, because I've only just started. Remember to... the time we went on the picnic and Kate made so much food we had to stop people on the road and give away sandwiches? Yes, oh, yes. <laughs> a whole truck full of food, enough for an army. Well, I don't like to see people go hungry. Anyway, it was only a small truck. <laughs> <laughs> I could have used you in our outfit overseas. You're not kidding, me too. Mm. Mm. Wouldn't be such a bad idea at that to have the mothers go along to feed the boys. Mr. Macy's daughter, that's the girl for George. She's got you hooked, George. Who's Mr. Macy's daughter? A drip. Oh, <laughs> she's not a drip. She's nice and very intelligent. Oh. That was the wrong thing to say, Kate. Now, you come back here to live, George, the way Joe says, and we'll... Yes, uh, I'll talk to uh, Judge Collins in the morning. Have him take you in with him. Great spot for you, Georgie. Talk to him in the morning. And I'll find a girl for you, and we'll put a smile back on that face. I feel so. It's so wonderful. I've never felt at home anywhere but here. Why shouldn't you, Georgie? We have no argument. Why should we have an argument? We were all hit by the same lightning. All of us. You know, Kate, you look so... so young. You know, you haven't changed a bit. It... it rings an old bell. And you too, Joe. You're amazingly the same. Still healthy and strong as an ox. I haven't got time to be sick. That's for old people. Joe hasn't been to a doctor as long as I can remember. I haven't been sick a day in my whole life. <coughs> Knock wood. Is that a fact, Joe? Yeah, sure. Except for that time when you... Oh, yes, yes. Uh, except for that time when I had the flu. But I thought he had pneumonia. He couldn't leave the bed. Never sick a day, you said. Uh-uh. Not a day in your whole life. George, please. Do you remember every time you were sick? I'd remember that time. George! Especially if that was the day when my partner was going to ship defective airplane parts out to the Army. What happened that day, Joe? What happened? George, please don't talk so loud. Minnie might come in. Now, that's enough out of you. I've had just about enough. I don't have to tell you anything. Ask the court what happened that day, if you're so curious. Ask the court to set me free. Ask the jury. It's all written down on paper, and it says I'm innocent. Innocent! You had me fooled for a minute, Joe. With all this food, and you talk about jobs and girls. You had me fooled. We're getting out of here. Listen, George. Now. I'll wait for you outside. Get your things. I'll go talk to him. Well, Put the dessert in the icebox. We'll have it later, Minnie. I told you not to bring her here, Chris. She doesn't belong here. Why doesn't she belong here? But because she's Larry's girl. She's not Larry's girl. Larry is dead. He's dead and he can't come back. Now, cut it out, Chris. Never, never in this world. He's not dead. As long as we're alive, your father and I, he's not dead, you understand? He can't be dead! What does she mean by that? Oh, I don't know. It was a funny thing for her to say. Oh, you know the way she talks. What's the matter? What are you driving at? If it ever turned out that you weren't telling the truth, I'd kill you. What kind of a thing is that to say? What kind of... I don't have to defend myself to you or nobody. Do you understand me? Not to you or nobody. No hard feelings, kid.
happiness are you going to have with all that rottenness underneath? Use your head, Ann. It can't be. George, I want you to go away from here and never come back to this house again as long as you live. Wait for me, George. Don't leave me, Annie. It's no good, Chris. It's no good. Sometimes you have to leave things the way they are, not disturb them. That's what Kate said. She's right. I've disturbed them too much already. Let me go with you. No, Chris, no. Just take a seat. Thank you. Fine, Chris. You, you've grown up. Thanks. You look... Oh, no. Don't try to tell me. I've changed. Some ways for the better, Chris. Some ways for the better. Lost it here. Gained it here. And here. You always seem to me to have plenty of both, Mr. Diva. Not enough, Chris. Not enough. Not enough brain. Not enough heart. Well, no time to talk of me, boy. You come about Annie. George was here and told me. You and Annie want to get married, he said. We're not getting married, Mr. Deaver. No. Annie broke it off. George came to our house after he'd seen you and she went away with him. Why? Because he convinced her that my father was guilty. Sorry for you, Chris. Very sorry. I don't believe my father is guilty, Mr. Diva. Go away, Chris. Go away and forget all about it. All about us. Don't dig into this thing. You'll be hurt by what you find. Go away. I want you to tell me that Dad is not guilty. It's important. My happiness and, and Annie's happiness depends on your courage to admit the truth. Admit it and free us. Chris, as God is my witness, what I'm going to tell you is the truth. We were in the midst of all that war business. Turning out stuff for the Army and Navy night and day, night and day, no end to it. The place is going full blast. We only worked from midnight on Saturday. We were going 24 hours the rest of the week. The foreman stopped me as I was making my way through the shop. He was also the government inspector. Oh, Herb, you see Joe anywhere? He's in the office, I guess. You look at those cylinders we turned out today? Well, why should I look at them? That's Joe's job. I don't know anything about them. They're defective. Defective? Right. What's the matter with them? Nothing will give you to see with the naked eye. But it shows up in the x-ray, all right. I'll have to reject the whole batch of them. What do you mean? You can't do that. You can't reject them. They got to be shipped out of here Monday morning. They have to pass. What can I do? They're no good. I warned Joe. Maybe he's been cutting the process too fine. I'll talk to you.
Have you seen Stan? He says there's something the matter with the cylinders. Yeah, I know. What happened, Joe? What happened? They came out bad, that's all. It happens. They came out bad. Well, can they be fixed? No, nothing. Start all over again. By that time, we're out of business. We shouldn't have gotten into this. We're way over our head. We're not big enough. We had no right to take on those contracts. I don't remember you saying that when I came back from Washington with them. You look at the profits at the bottom of the page and you thought we were plenty big enough then. I relied on you. You said we could handle it. And we can. Just because a batch of cylinders come out bad? Stan's an old lady. Ever since they made him the army inspector and gave him that x-ray machine, he's been seeing things. What are we going to do, Joe? Well, what can we do? Take the rap. Or ship them. Ship them? How can we? Ship them, that's all. It isn't the first time we've shipped stuff out of here. There wasn't a hundred percent. You think every stove that we sent out of here before the war was perfect? Nobody turns out a perfect product. But this is different, Joe. Well, what do you want to do? Not ship them and have them cancel us out, put us out of business? You know what they'll do to us if we don't deliver. Will they be all right? Well, they'll have to be all right. I don't like it. We're taking an awful chance. If something happens... Okay, then you think of something better. Either we take the chance or we're through. Good and through. Broke. Joe. I've got every cent in the world tied up in this place. It'll be the end of everything for me. I wouldn't even be able to keep the house. Well, what makes you think I'm any better off? I've got more than my money tied up in this. I've got me tied up in it. Me. My flesh and blood. My heart. My brains. Forty years of it. Forty hard years. Keller and Deaver. I guess you don't know what that means because you... Never had to get it the way I did. It was all there for you. All you had to do was just reach out for it. Me? I had to grab it. Grab it and hold on. When you were working for your father, wearing a white collar and living in the best house in town, I was collecting scrap iron in the back alleys. The junk man. Old cars, old sinks, old stoves. I picked up a stove from you once, Herb. Did you know that? Paid you for it, too. I guess you wouldn't remember it. It was only $3.50. But I would, because it was my last $3.50. I beat it in the scrap with my bare hands, and I sold it for five. Dollar and a half profit. Nice turnover. No. The tough times were finished when you joined up with me, Herb. We were on the way then. The times when I couldn't meet the payroll. <laughs> yes, and the times that the workmen left on Saturday with more money in their pockets than I took home. The time when Kate took a job to pay the interest on the notes. Kate. Kate, the foreign girl who worked for your mother. You're only losing money, Herb. Only money. But it's a crime to ship those cylinders out of here. You must realize that. But it's only a crime if you get caught. The main thing is to survive. Joe Keller is going to survive. So uh, ship them out of here. I say they're okay. Ship them. Just the same I didn't ship them. On Monday, Joe was home sick. I was scared. I should like to say I didn't because of honesty and principle. But it isn't so. I was merely frightened. And so Monday passed. Next day was Tuesday. Black Tuesday. There had been the devil to pay. We were late in shipping the cylinders we promised. And the army men were raising Cain. When they left, I called up Joe on the phone. He was home, sick. The first time since I'd known Joe to stay home, sick. Joe, is that you? It's Herb. They were just here. They want the stuff. Well, did you tell them they got them? No, of course I didn't tell them. Well, why didn't you? Well, Joe, I'm scared to take the responsibility. Who says you have to take the responsibility? Will you do like I say and stop acting like an old woman? Joe, I'm frightened. Can't you come down here and handle it yourself? Well, how can I come down when I'm sick? But if something happens... Nothing's going to happen. I'll take full responsibility. Full responsibility. Do you hear me? Yes, Joe, I know. You'll take full responsibility. I heard you, but 
But just the same, Joe, just the same. Full responsibility, I said. So ship them. Ship them, I said. Joe. Joe. What are we going to do about them cylinders, Herb? They're piling up at the loading platform. Do they go or don't they? Will somebody kindly make up their mind? Ship them, maybe. Ship them. It's about time. Ship them. Full responsibility, he said. He'd take full responsibility. But you told them this in court and they didn't believe you. The judge, the jury, all those men, they didn't believe you. Why? On the telephone, you can't have responsibility. In a court, you can always deny it. He couldn't be like that. He couldn't be. I know him. He's my father. This is something you have brooded about until it's become real to you. But it isn't the truth. You know it's not the truth. It's the truth, Chris. It's the truth. Time's up. Do the men at the plant still say, if you want to know, ask Joe? All right. It's all right, Minnie. I'll see you at this. Annie. Yes, it's me. May I come in? Of course. You surprised me. I thought you were in Chicago. I was. Is Chris here? I phoned him at the office. They said he hadn't been there. He's out of town for a few days on a vacation. Oh, that's too bad. I wanted to talk to him before I spoke to you. But perhaps it's just as well. Annie, I don't know what brought you back here, but I'm sorry you came. I'm not going to pretend to you. You're not welcome here. I expected that you'd feel that way, Kate. But it's not important. What's important is what I have to say. You have nothing to say to me. When I left here last week, it was for good. I thought I should never come back. But in Chicago, I began to figure things out, and I realized that I'd merely run away and that it wouldn't do. It isn't better to leave things the way they are, Kate. Sometimes they've got to be disturbed. What do you want of us? Why do you come back in our lives, you and George and your father? What do you want? I want to marry Chris. That's impossible and you know it. Chris would never marry you as long as Larry's alive. He wouldn't do such a thing. Why won't you learn to face the truth, Kate? The truth, the truth. What good is the truth if it destroys us all? What good is it? Chris asked me to marry him, Kate. He had no right to do that and you had no right to let him. It was wicked of you, both of you, and you know it. We love each other. You're engaged to Larry. Larry's not coming back, Kate. No such thing, no such thing, you hear? He is coming back. And when he does, if you want to break it off, that's all right. But you've got to wait till he comes back. You've got to wait. We can't wait forever. Chris and I have a right to live, too. It doesn't depend on me. I can't change the way things are. I don't want to do it without your consent, Kate. It would make Chris unhappy. He loves you so it would break his heart. You owe him this much happiness, Kate. Tell him it's all right. It would take more than my words. The night you marry him, Larry will be with you. Your hearts will dry up with thinking of him and every night afterwards, as long as he lives. Larry's dead. No. He crashed off the coast of China February 9th, 1944. You've got no proof. You say that, but you have no proof. Not even the army had proof. I have proof, Kate. <laughs> This is a letter from Larry. His last letter. It was written the day he died. No! Read it, Kate. No!
shortly. I know why it was. I had to keep it from you. When Chris comes, I'll be at Lydia's. my drink, will you, Charlie? No, 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 no. Joe doesn't need any coaching, Charlie. He's winners now. <laughs> Play to win, that's my motto. Play to win. But I raise you. Stay. Don't you ever lose, Joe? Cards. Go on, please. He's drawing to a flush again. <laughs> Somebody come in and see who it is, Charlie. Did you fill it? Cost you money to find out. Come on, Charlie. Yes. Chris, when did you get back? I thought you were going to stay away for a while. I just got in. I stopped by to pick you up. Oh, well, I won't be long. Uh, this is my last hand. Uh, you know everybody here, don't you? Yeah. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Ellsworth, big customer. My son, Chris. How are you, Chris? <laughs> yeah, let's get this thing over with, huh? It's getting yeah. late. Uh, where were we? I'll call you, Joe. What have you got? Four ladies. Four queens. Uh, uh, didn't think you had them, Joe. <laughs> See how easy it is to make money, Chris? Uh, <laughs> Collect, Charlie. Uh, Give them the bad news. Don't brag, Joe. I'll get you next Tuesday. You got to lose sometime, you know. He pays me wages, and I give it back to him in poker. <laughs> See you next Tuesday. Good night. Good night. What cards? A man has no luck. <laughs> In the morning, Joe. Chris. Good night, Swede. Good game, Joe. It was fun. Invite me again. I certainly will. Pleasure to take your money. <laughs> I told you to play that hand, Joe. <laughs> you certainly did, Charlie. You certainly did. Well, good night, Joe. <laughs> good night. Do you play poker as well as your father? I can't do anything as well as my father. <laughs> you hear that? And he's got an education, too. Me, I never went to school. An ignoramus, he calls me. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Joe, we're getting complaints from the retailers. Seems to be something the matter with the doors. Got any ideas? Oh, it's that stamping machine. We had a bad stamping machine. You ship them back and I'll refit them, no cost to you. Fair enough. And here's something else you don't know. And none of your experts know either. They're not exactly the specification. They're not? Yeah, I changed them myself. If I'd follow those highbrow blueprints of yours, you'd have gone broke. <laughs> Joe, you're a wonder. I'll bet there isn't a nail in the place you don't know about. Well, I wouldn't bet against that. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know, ask Joe. Isn't that what they say in the trade? That's right. If you want to know, ask Joe. <laughs> <laughs> well, good night, Joe. See you. Good night. <laughs> Glad to have met you. Good night, sir. Better luck next time. That's a big man. Head of United Service. We're making plenty with him. <laughs> Do you want to know? Ask Joe. What do you know about that? Even he heard it. I'm getting famous. Put the chairs back, will you? What's the matter? You don't look happy. Didn't you have a good time? Is it really true, Dad? If you want to know, ask Joe. Sure, every nail on the joint, just like he said. That's how I built this place up, by knowing what's going on, knowing it good. Then I want to ask you a straight question. Well, shoot, go ahead. How did those cylinders get shipped out of here without your knowing about them? So you're on that again, huh? Well, how did they? Why don't you go ahead and say I'm guilty? Go ahead, you might as well. I don't want you to be guilty, I want you to be innocent. But people have put doubts in my mind, help me to get rid of them. Isn't it enough that I told you so? Can't you trust your own father? You're right, I should. I really should. But somehow I can't. I just can't let it go at that, and you've got to help me. Well, what can I do? I've told you a million times. I've told the jury. What can I do? Dad, I saw Herb Diva today. You... 
Now, what's Spring feeling, so? What do you want to go ahead and do a thing like that for? He told me his side of the story. Now I want to hear yours. My own son. I want to hear yours and judge for myself. My own son spying on me. Going behind my back. Dad, I've got a right to know what happened. You owe it to me to explain. Do you hear? You owe it to me to explain. Oh, okay. Explain. Explain. That's all I've been doing is explaining. I'm tired of explaining. Sick and tired of it. I don't have to explain. Not to you. You're my son. You're in it with me. My flesh and blood. You wear my clothes, eat my food, you live in my home. I don't have to explain to you. If I'm guilty, then you're guilty, too. Do you understand me? You're guilty, too. Then you... You did know. Matters in business. I'm in business. A batch of bad cylinders and you're out of business. Out of business. You don't know how to operate, they tell you. They close you off, tear up your contracts. Your stuff is no good. What's it to them? You put 40 years into a business and they... Cut your head off in five minutes. Now, what could I do? Let him take 40 years away? Let him take my life away? I... I never thought they'd install him. Honest, I didn't. I thought it'd be stopped somewhere along the line. Why didn't you tell them? You knew they were defective. You knew they wouldn't hold up. You knew it. Well, it was too late. The newspapers. It was all over the front page. 21 planes crashed. It was too late. They came with handcuffs to the factory. Now, what could I do? I ask you, what could I do? Chris. Chris, I did it for you. I'm an old man. When would I have another chance to make something for you? For me? Yes. For me? I was dying every day and my boys were dying and you did it for me. What kind of a man are you anyway? Kids hanging in the air by those cylinders and you knew it. Oh, I was so proud of you. You were helping us to win. And you were worried about your business. Don't you have a country? Don't you think about people? Don't you live in the world? Haven't you got a heart? What must I do to you? What must I do? What must I do? Chris. Chris. Dad. Dad. Yes. Why don't you go to bed, Kate? It's almost one o'clock. You know why. I'm waiting for Chris. Don't worry about me, Jim. I'm perfectly all right. Uh, would you like some coffee? It's too late for coffee. It's too late for you, too. No wonder you don't sleep. I don't want to go to sleep tonight. Had an emergency? Somebody had a bellyache and thought he was dying. How's Joe? cried like a child before. I never saw him that way. Since when did you know it, Jim? Since always, I guess, Kate. You're smart. I always had the feeling that in the back of his head, Chris knew. I think it would be such a shock. You don't know your own son? You don't think he'd... go away without... I mean, for good. He'll be back. Chris is a good son. He'll come back. Oh. I heard voices. Hello, Doc. Hi, Joe. What are you doing here? I'm just going. Put her to bed, Joe. Both of you go to bed. Staying up won't help. Sleep will. Sleep's a wonderful thing. Best thing about living. What do you want? I don't like him mixing up so much. Joe, he knows. How does he know? I guess a long time ago. I don't like that. I guess Annie knows, too. You heard from her? No, she's still over at Lydia's. Funny thing, they're not coming back here. Maybe Chris is with her. No. Frank was just here. What is this? Open house in the middle of the night? 
Would you like a cup? Oh, no, you know what it does to me. Huh? I thought I had a family. What happened to my family, Kate? Drew, I was thinking this way. If he comes back... He is coming back. What do you mean, if? I think... If you could sit him down and explain yourself. I mean... You ought to make it clear to him that... You know you did a terrible thing. I mean... If he saw that you realized what you did, you... You see... Ask him to forgive me, you mean? Something like that, Joe. Ask my son to forgive me. I don't know what happened. He wanted money, so I made money. Man has to take care of his family. That's the first thing he has to do. He has to take care of his family. What must I be forgiven? You needed money, didn't you, do? Buy clothes, food, to send the children to school. You had to have money, didn't you? Joe, so not that way. Well, I didn't want it that way either. What difference is it as long as you've got it? I spoiled the both of you. I should have put him out when he was ten like I was put out. Made him earn his keep, then he'd know how a buck is made in this world. Forgive me. I could live on a buck a day myself, but I've got a family, so but I... But it doesn't excuse it, Joe, that you did it for the family. Well, it's got to excuse it. There's something bigger than the family to him, too. No, no, there's nothing bigger than that. There's nothing he could do that I couldn't forgive. Because I'm his father and he's my son. There's nothing bigger than that. And you're going to tell him that, you understand? You don't... You don't think he'd go to the police? Joe, please. No. No, he wouldn't do a thing like that. Not without telling me. Where is he? Going away like this and without saying a word, not coming back. He'll be all right, Joe. Nothing's going to happen. For you, Kate. For both of you. That's all I ever lived for. He doesn't know what he did. He doesn't know how awful a thing it was. He lied to himself and he doesn't know. He'll have to suffer to know. He'll have to suffer in some horrible way to know. Come away with me, Chris. Leave them all and come away with me. We'll forget everything and start fresh. No, I can't run away. It's too easy to run away. We've all been running away and it's too easy. What can you do but give him up? Go to the police and give him up? It's not enough to give him up, Annie. It's not enough to put him in jail. He's got to see it himself. He's got to understand what he did. Do you see what I mean, Annie? He's got to see it and be his own judge. Yes, Chris. But how do you make a man see into himself? How do you explain such a thing to a man like Dad? A man who's forgotten about other men, living as if he were alone in the world. How do you tell him such a thing and make him understand? You show him this. So you decided to come back, huh? 
What do you mean by frightening your mother half to death that way? What kind of a thing does that do? You know she's not well. I want to talk to you, Dad. And I want to talk to you. Something bothers you, huh? Got too much money, is that what bothers you? The way you got it bothers me. Well, then, what's the problem? When something bothers you, either get used to it or get rid of it. If you can't get used to it, then throw it away. Do you hear me? Take every cent and give it to charity. Throw it in the sewer. Does that settle it? In the sewer, that's all. That's not enough, Dad. What's the matter? You think I'm kidding? I'm telling you what to do. If it's dirty, then burn it. It's your money, not mine. I'm a dead man. I'm an old dead man. Nothing is mine. Well, tell me, what do you want me to do? It's not what I want you to do. It's what you want to do. What should I want to do? Prison? You want me to go to prison? Is that where I belong? Well, then tell me so. What's the matter? Why can't you tell me? You say everything else to me, say that. I'll tell you why you can't say it. Because you know I don't belong there. You know. Read this, Dad. Then tell yourself what you must do. What is it? What have you got there? Chris. Chris, where have you been? No, Chris, no. It's from Larry. Give it to me. Larry? He wrote it the day he died. Don't read it, Joe. My dear Anne. Now Don't be listen, quiet. Joe. Go away. Now be quiet, Kate. I want to hear what he has to say. It's impossible to put down the things I feel. But I've got to tell you something. Yesterday they flew in a load of papers from the States. And I read about Dad and your father. I'm not clever the way you are. The way Chris is. And I cannot understand or make myself understand how this could have happened. We get to be proud of the planes we fly. They come to be piece by piece, bit by bit, something of you at home who have made them. We are not alone. But my father has made me alone. He has betrayed us all. You at home who have kept faith with us. We who have kept faith with you. I'm ashamed. I can't face the other men. I can't face anybody. I don't know how to tell you any. But I'm going out on a mission in a few minutes. And I will not come back. I want you to forgive me, Annie, for doing this. But it's the only way I know how to pay for what he has done. Do you understand what this means, Dad? Yeah. I understand. I didn't like doing this, Dad. You know? Sure, kid, I know. You did right. Joe! No, it's no use, Kate. No use. Maybe I've known it all along. A man can be defective, too. Like a machine part, a cylinder. Little pressure and he cracks. A lot of innocent people die. A lot of innocent people. You paid for it, Joe. Larry paid for it. He was your son. There's nothing more you can do. Sure, he was my son. But I think to him, they were all my sons. I guess they were. All my sons. He's your father. You can't send your own father to prison. It's with him now, Mom. It's whatever he thinks. Have you gone crazy? What's accomplished if he goes to jail? Will it raise the dead? The war's over. It's over. Don't say that, Mom. What was Larry to you? A stone that fell into the water? It's not enough to be sorry. Larry didn't kill himself so you and Dad could be sorry. He did it to show you. What more can we be than sorry? What more? 
you can be better. Once and for all, you can know that the whole earth comes in through those fences. That there's a universe outside and you're responsible to it. And if you're not, then you threw your son away. Because that's why he died, you understand? That's why. Don't go in, Mom. Why not? I took care of him all his life, whenever he needed me. I can take care of him now, too. Make a good life for yourselves and never look back. Never. Larry is dead and Joe is dead. So live. Live. Yeah, never sick a day in his life, except for one very well-placed day. <laughs> now, I like here how the backstory to the picture was told in the flashback scenes, and that's where we see that Joe had simply lied in court. Now, we have a couple lines in the movie here where they talked about inspecting the cylinders with x-ray machines. Now, yes, x-rays can be used for things other than medical applications. They also have industrial applications as well. Like one of the things that you would use them for is to test for hairline cracks or metal fatigue in the metal, which is what they would have used to test the cylinders. But we do see here that, you know, Larry essentially went, at least according to the letter, Larry essentially went on a suicide mission because once he read the newspapers that were shipped over there, you know, he just could not live with his father's guilt. And honestly, neither could his father because we see Joe, you know, in that final scene where he's walking up the staircase and he says, you know, talking about all of the pilots in World War II, in a way, they were all his sons. And, and he just could not live with the guilt of having killed them. And uh, so, yeah, he committed suicide himself. Which, incidentally, this picture, because of that, you know, they, they reference it a few times that there were 21 pilots that were killed due, due to the defective cylinders. For those of you who might be fans of more modern alternative rock, this picture is where the band 21 Pilots gets its name. It's a reference to the 21 pilots who were killed due to the defective cylinders. So yeah, if you like the more modern rock music and you're familiar with the band 21 Pilots, this movie is where they get their name. Now, Howard Duff that was in the picture here, he played George, you know, Anne's brother. He made his film debut just a year earlier in the film Brute Force. And in that one, he also starred with Burt Lancaster then. So tonight's picture was something of a reunion for him. 
Now, Howard Duff, he was a regular of Westerns and Noirs from the late 40s through the 50s. And uh, it was in 1951 that he married Ida Lupino. And a few years after that, they were starred together in the movie Women's Prison. That was one I brought you a long time ago. And, uh, okay, Burt Lancaster, uh, he was the one, you know, playing the younger brother. Uh, He had a 45-year career, you know, in many different types of roles, in many genres. But some of his notable films, he was in Sorry, Wrong Number. Uh, He starred in that one with Barbara Stanwyck. He was in From Here to Eternity, uh, Run Silent, Run Deep, which was kind of a, uh, it was a submarine-based war movie. And in 1960, he did win an Academy Award for Best Actor for his role in Elmer Gantry. And, as always, I thank you for spending the evening with Full Moon Matinee. Stay with us as we continue our further investigations into the long-lost evidence of Hollywood. Until next time.